Hey guys and welcome to Petroped. So today we're going to be testing the brand new Land Rover Discovery Sport. And this is a car I've wanted to drive for quite some time, since it was launched last year actually. Um, I'm a big Land Rover fan. I've had Freelander, Discovery 3 and Range Rover Sport. Love them all. Uh, and I'm really intrigued by this car. I think it looks fantastic and I can't wait to drive it. Let's take a look, shall we? So this car belongs to a friend of mine. He literally picked it up just a couple of weeks ago and gave me a call and said, look, why don't you come and, and drive it? Um, and uh, first things first is um, it's not clean. Um, but that's great because this is a Land Rover um, and this car lives at the end of a really muddy lane. Um, so it gets used properly pretty much every day. Um, but first of all, I think the spec of this car is fantastic. It's finished in a Firenze red and then it's got a Santorini black roof and privacy glass. And, and black wheels and I just think that sets the car off really nice and obviously at the moment down the sort of sides of the car we've got this lovely kind of mud mist um, which uh, should be an option really for any Land Rover. So I think the front of this car looks absolutely fantastic um, it's clearly no discovery but I'm going to talk more about that once we get it out on the road um, but really lovely clean lines nice grille um, and I just think it looks fantastic from the front um, and as then we come around the sides and the styling, very Evoke-like, but just a bigger version. Um, some of the same kind of details as the Evoke. This it's on the top of the wheel arch there. Um, but yeah, really lovely clean lines all the way down the side. You know me and my fascination with the rear end of cars. And I think this one's pretty up there. Twin ex exit exhaust, which is always cool. Um, and then just a nice, clean, pretty aggressive, very funky lights. I love the rear spoiler as well to give it that sporty feel. Um, and I'm always a big fan of cars with privacy glass. I just think um, if you're specking a car from new and privacy glass is there as an option, why wouldn't you do it? I just think it makes them look really cool. And that contrast with the black roof, it kind of joins the roof and the body together. Really, really cool. So this particular car is a TD4. So that's a two litre uh, diesel Land Rover Ingenium engine, the latest engine in their series. Um, it kicks out about 180 horsepower, but it's the combined cycle consumption figures that are impressive. For a car 4x4, a car of this size, we're looking at a combined cycle of 53.3 miles per gallon, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> in a review I get in the back of the car um, but I have to say I am a really tall guy and look at the amount of legroom I've got here I've got absolutely buckets of space very comfy seats uh, loads of headroom um, a really comfortable place to be there's room in here for uh, three three adults on this back seat and then there's some seats that drop down um, in the boot where you could put kids really that you probably wouldn't want to put full grown adults in there but very impressive space in the back of this car. So again, in this particular model, we've got power tailgate exposing. That's a pretty fair size boot, really. If if you buy this expecting a discovery size boot, then then that's not going to be the case. But it's it's a big old boot. It's plenty of room in here. So I've removed the uh, heavy duty floor, and all we need to do to get the extra seats up is pull on this strap, and there we go. Uh, room in there for certainly a large child, small adult, plenty of leg room, very clever. And then to put these seats back, you basically just pull on that strap and push forward, and they drop down. So there you go, five seats to seven seats really quickly, and then Jaguar family DNA. So all I need to do is pull this button and push that down. That is just genius.
So first driving impressions of this car is it doesn't feel big at all and um, if you've ever driven the uh, full-size Discovery, um, I said I had a Discovery 3, that was a big car um, and it felt big um, and especially sort of in built up areas um, where you had to sneak through traffic, it was a big old car. This doesn't feel like that at all. Um, it's kind of a huge car in terms of practicality terms, loads of space for people uh, and luggage, but it just doesn't feel big. Driving position's absolutely excellent, very comfy, loads of support in the seats, um, and yeah, it's a really nice place to be. Um, and this little engine's got some poke. It's, it's lovely, actually. I'm on a really tight road at the moment, but um, certainly in terms of, of uh, smiles, I don't think we're going to be let down here at all. So, uh, very familiar surroundings, having done a couple of Jaguar tests recently. Uh, gearbox um, is the same, so I've got my normal rotational selector. Uh, I can go into sport mode if I want. I've got flappy paddles, although I guess arguably on this car you're going to be doing that less. Um, but it does feel sporty, so you know if you wanted to push on, I'm on a sort of quite a narrow, nice little back road now. You wanted to push on, steering's quite nice and directional. Um, it feels really planted. Yeah, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not kind of beating Chris Harris or anything, but yeah, it feels absolutely fantastic. So this is a four x four test. So let's go off road. So I've put it into mud and ruts. So that's basically going to raise the suspension height. Um, and just give me a bit more um, clearance and I'm just going to go very gently down this road pretty muddy pretty rutty um, the owner did say take it off road so that's what I'm doing I'm just going to be a bit careful going down yeah very easy yeah, it's dealing with this pretty good to be fair um, obviously when you're off road you do go much slower than you would imagine but yeah it's you got to do a 4x4 test if you're going to test drove a Land Rover Discovery and so far so good there's some pretty nasty ruts to be honest but we're dealing with those really really well we'll see how we get on when we come back the other way so far so good okay so we reached the bottom of this uh, lovely track so we're going to go back up um, we're still in uh, mud and ruts mode. Uh, ground's really skiddy. Just had to do a U-turn back there in very, very thick mud, and I was a bit worried I was going to get stuck completely. But actually, not a problem at all. It just breezed through it. Um, so, you know, you've probably got to say that for the average Discovery Sport owner, they'll probably never come down a track as uh, bumpy and as rutted as this. Um, but you know if they do this car just breezes through it doesn't surprise me um, I've been off-road at the Land Rover driving school when we bought the uh, the discovery and uh, the things that these cars can do on standard road tires are nothing more than epic to be fair I'm just trying not to scratch the shit out of the side of the car there brilliant um, and this is actually there's some really nice or nasty chalk rocks very slippy under can under the tyres, standard road tyres, and we are absolutely monstering up this. So impressive. So let's put it back into normal driving mode. Um, and uh, I have to say, that off-road was great fun, but really, really impressive. Um, so just in terms of on-road driving performance, because let's face it, most Discovery drivers are going to do that um, pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, so this, this car's got 180 brake and that's good enough for some punchy performance. I mean, you're naught to 60 times, just a touch over eight seconds, um, which in a car this size uh, is really not too bad. Um, the car weighs just over 1,800 kilos. So I need to do the, ah, uh, well, it's not really a Discovery. Well, it's not. Um, it's as simple as that. I had a Discovery for, for four years, epic car. You could get seven adults in that car quite comfortably. You could, um, uh, tow three and a half tons um, the, the towed weight in this car by the way if you are looking at towings um, up to 2,000 um, kilos so two tons um, which isn't isn't too bad um, but it's not a discovery one of the things you find if you've ever been in a discovery or owned one is they're a big car 
Um, and when you go into a town especially, you have to be really wary where you park them. Not only are they big in terms of, of length and width, but they're very tall. They're nearly two metres high. And in a normal discovery, that means some car parks are a no-go zone. Although you can drop the suspension um, on, a, on a discovery, um, you know, I've been in the situation where I've gone into a car park and, and really worried about getting out without ripping the roof off. Um, this is about 1.7 metres high, so you wouldn't have that worry. Um, so, you know, first things first, it's not a discovery. Um, however, um, it is a very, very nice car. Um, interestingly, you know, uh, it's got some tones of Evoque styling, um, but, but this car is actually cheaper than an Evoque for a similar spec. So I think the car we're in now, um, with options, was about £37,000 on the road. Um, whereas an Evoque would probably be a bit more than that. So hmm, that's where it kind of sits in, the, in that family. Don't buy this expecting a discovery because it's not, but it's, it's way more than just, as one of my Instagram followers said the other day, a fat Evoque. What I'd really like to do is get in this car and do a really nice long motorway journey um, because I think that would really bring out another element to what this car's all about. You, know, you could pack it up with your skiing stuff, you could sit on the auto route and just bomb down to the Alps for a lovely weekend skiing and I just think this car would be absolutely superb to do that. Um, I can imagine it would truck along very nicely on a, a dual carriage or a motorway. Sadly today I, I don't have time to, to head out to a decent main road because we're out in the middle of the sticks of West Sussex. Um, but, but yeah, I think that's when this car would absolutely come alive. Okay guys, so I'm back safe and sound. Uh, it was muddy before, it's even more muddy now. What a great car. Loved um, taking it off-road. Um, I have to say though, from a, in, in terms of a package, if you're a, sort of for a family car, you want practicality, you want style and looks, you want performance, um, you can't go far wrong, to be honest. Very, very impressed. Um, really loved the drive. Um, reminded me a lot of the Land Rovers I'd had in the past, but with a, a new, more modern sort of feel. So yeah, I, I like that very much. Very impressed. Um, so. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, give me a thumbs up if you have. Um, you know, if you put some comments down below, they're always appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped to keep up to date with all my latest or upcoming videos. And I've got a couple of crackers coming up in the next couple of weeks with a bit of luck. Um, so anyway, it's time for me to sign off. So uh, you take care, guys. Drive safe.